Good morning. If you want to see how we made this uh, oak computer desk with slide out uh, shelf for the keyboard, two file cabinets, totally open design, stay tuned because that's what we're going to do next. Good morning and welcome to another Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 225, the 17th uh, video of uh, year five. Uh, today it's kind of funny, uh, you know, we get a lot of projects from people that get something off the internet and they're saying, can you make this for me and uh, so forth and so on. Well, this is kind of like that, only the uh, picture they got off the internet was from Memphis Monday 79, a computer desk, and they want me to build it for them. Well, I mentioned, I mentioned that I could build something else if there's something else they want. Uh, no, no, that's what they want. So, it's a big project. It's not morning. I've already been working on it a little bit to kind of get us started. But to get us finished, we have to do what? That's right, we got to knock off the chit chat and get to work. Here's that picture they got off the internet. It's, um, looks like it's oak. It's got uh, eight legs. Two file drawers. Um, this is a stand for the CPU. Uh, on the addition we're making, it's not going to have this pencil drawer. Instead, it's going to have a slide out um, tray to put the um, keyboard on. And it's going to, back here in the back, we're going to build some little, a little uh, stand like. Uh, you know, put little uh, pukas in and stuff. What I'm working here on here is the uh, table jig. Um, how this works is you make this little frame and you have these little stumps in here that stand in for the legs that are the exact dimensions of the leg. And then when you take the jig off, you have your frame in place and then you can just install your legs. These are gone, and th this is the stock for the legs. All this uh, table jig is, is these are just little uh, scraps of remnant that are put around, that are put around the piece. Building a table jig is even easier than you think because all you got to do is position these stumps here exactly where you want them. This is actually going to be the top of the desk. Position the legs exactly where you want them and then connect the uh, strapping. So I have the uh, table jig works is, here's the uh, stringer, you rig it up like this and then you take your frame pieces, this is one of the frame pieces here, and you put it right against that, right against that uh, frame, but let me show you what that does. So you can't just put it uh, right in there against the frame piece because what that'll do is that'll put the the outer frame here right up next to the edge of the leg. Well, you want a little relief there, and so you build into the table jig, put a little 3 16 inch spacer right there. I think that's more like a quarter. Now, now you automatically get that little relief right there. Now these spacers are real easy to install. They don't even have to come out all the way to the edge because all you're looking for is getting that gap. So you can just put the spacer in and tack it in a couple of places.
Okay, now all I gotta do is cut the frame pieces and uh, stage them around that uh, jig. So I'll go around and just cut out these frame pieces, put them in place. I want them to fit real tight, so from time to time I might have to trim them. But so I'll do that for all the frame pieces. I got uh, four, eight, uh, nine, ten, got eleven frame pieces to cut. I'll cut those and we'll be on a roll. Besides this assembly jig, uh, this assembly table jig, uh, there's many other jigs I use when I'm uh, building tables. These are some of my uh, tapering jigs. These uh, wooden ones are homemade and is a store-bought one. What you do is you like on this store, uh, this homemade one here, you put you put your leg in there, and it's at whatever angle you want, and then you just run it through the saw, and it cuts a wedge off um, to taper the leg. Then after the leg is tapered, <clears throat> you got to attach it to the table frame, and to do that, you got to run a hanger bolt into the uh, into the end here at 45 degrees. So how you do that is just get a um, 45 degree jig here that puts that thing straight up. And I got several, several versions here. And this is a simple one here. This is just the a little uh, centering jig I use to position handles on uh, drawers and cabinets. And what we're working on now in our project is uh, making corner blocks. And after you make the corner blocks, you've got to put holes down through the corners, you know, at the right angle so they go into your frame. And you can imagine how hard that is. Um, but here, I've got an assortment of jigs that I use. Uh, so I pulled them all out to find out if I have the right size. That one's too big. That one's just right, that one's too small, and that one's too big. So we'll use this one. All you do is you slide it in there and take the drill press and drill your holes right down through there. And this jig here is perhaps most important because not only is it a measuring jig, you see that 45 degree angle right in there. Um, it also, when I'm making these corner blocks, It holds them into place because holding these things solid and using your hands to do it is a bad idea. This way I can hold it against the fence, it won't move, and it's totally safe. I'll go ahead and cut that and you'll see that my hand shouldn't get anywhere near it. And there's my corner block. Now you can see when I put this in here, this is where it really gets dangerous. If I was trying to hold that with my hand, um, that saw causes this thing to, to kind of creep along. Um, and also, there could be a block of wood. When I cut that off, it'll go flying. So here I'm just uh, positioning these corner blocks where they're going to go. I think I got about five or six done. I have about five or six more to do, and we'll go on to the next process. And this is a whole dr uh, digging, uh, drilling jig for the corner blocks. I go in there just like that. Uh, this is a pocket hole drill. I've got the depth stop just where I want it. This is how it works. Here 
here I'm attaching the uh, frame with pocket screws. I'll try to take this uh, table frame off. Now, I probably have to break break it off. That's all, that's no problem. But if I can if I can take it off intact, that'll tell me that all my sides are plumb for sure. So I'll try that first. Here's to be coming off. See if I can lift it straight up. That means that all my all my sides are plumb, and I haven't made any goofy errors that way. Okay, about got it. Well, you can see how nice that comes out. Or, so really orderly. And then the legs, these legs still need to be tapered and um, the drawers and stuff need to be put on them. But they will sit in there like that. I got the uh, legs just uh, standing up in there, just mocked up. Um, the, the legs look a little heavy because they haven't been tapered yet. And I'll, I'll be doing that in, in a little bit here, but first thing we have to do is uh, put some dados uh, in the legs. Let's talk about that. Here's a picture of uh, the structure we're working on right now. Uh, these drawers are exposed under here and around the back and around the sides. Uh, there's no cabinet walls. It's the, rather the drawers are simply mounted to the legs. And I say simply, uh, but it ain't that simple. Uh, we got to put these two cross braces in and line up these drawer fronts, line up the boxes, make all that sing. So this is a take, a take away and a half right here. This is kind of a one-to-one -one witness board where I've gone and made these one-to-one -one plans for what we have to do to this leg. Um, so I can put in here where the drawer fronts are gonna be, where the drawer boxes are gonna be, where the dados are gonna be, um, with all the measurements but the beauty of it is if you if you're missing a measurement um, or you need to double check something you can you can take the measurement right off the plan here I give you a close-up see all those measurements and the fact is I probably wouldn't even have to write those measurements down because I can take the measurements directly off this piece of wood. This is what we're going to be cutting next. Right there are the dados. Now I'm making a big deal about these one-to-one -one plans because uh, they make things so much easier. Um, here's, here's the dado we have to cut. It's going to be two and a half inches wide, three quarters of an inch thick. 
and I get it right off my uh, little schematic. Okay, let's go ahead and try to cut this dado. Okay, I already uh, did a practice dado. You can see what I'm going to do is I'm not I'm not going to use a uh, the dado set on my saw. I'm going to just make uh, saw cuts. You can see the saw cut pattern through here, and then clean it out with a chisel. Okay, I got that saw blade right inside that line and what I'll do is I'll cut I'll, I'll cut a curve right here and then I'll another curve on the other side and then I'll just uh, go through there freehand and cut some more curves out in here <coughs> and you'll also notice that I've clamp this thing down because if anything moves it uh, all bets are off and there's the other side same deal Now for the freehand part, and what I've done is I've projected the limits of that dado up to the top, and so I just got to keep my cuts inside those lines. And then to cut the, uh, to clear out this, watch how easy this is. You just put your screwdriver or your and they just break out. Cut all those dados in the legs to receive these cleats that the drawer boxes will ride on. Now I'm test driving the uh, arrangement of the cleats. Let's go look at that. I'll be uh, making cleats out of this uh, two and a half inch oak here. Um, but before I commit to this oak, I wanted to make sure I had uh, all the answers. Okay, I still need to taper these legs and everything, but uh, I need to get these uh, cleats all uh, sorted out. So what I've done is taken some remnant and cut it all to length uh, and mocked it up here, make sure it all works. Okay, now what I'll go ahead and do is uh, uh, cut these cleats uh, in the uh, final wood. One final trial fit of these uh, cleats. These uh, still need to be uh, rounded over and all that business. Okay, I got this whole uh, mock-up finished. Um, now let's go ahead and uh, taper these legs and Again, to get things uh, finished up. I'm going to be tapering just uh, two sides. This side here, put a little, put a little mark, and the other inside, put a little mark. Uh, it may seem funny that I would uh, go to all the trouble 
of marking where I need to make the cuts. But I'm telling you, you can really get screwed up. These tapering jigs are all the same. Um, it's basically a, a flat piece of plywood, in this case three quarter inch, with a two before. And you rig a two before in there at whatever angle uh, you want to cut your taper and secure your board to it and then run it through straight and that puts and that puts your angle here on your uh, on your leg Here what I'm doing is I'm replacing those little pieces of wood we just took out, putting them under here when I flip it over. And there's our tapered leg. I'll go ahead and uh, taper the other three and we'll be on a roll. Well, I got the second uh, leg tapered. Looks pretty good. Oh, wait. What is this red mark? See what I'm talking about? Uh, even after making a big deal about it, I still spaced out and uh, tapered that thing on the wrong side. Now I think I can switch these two legs. and make it right. Okay. I just switched those two legs around. I think that's going to correct it. Um, but now I don't want to get fooled here. So I need to take that mark off. Take that mark off and put another mark on the other side. Well, we got all uh, eight legs uh, tapered. We got all our uh, dados in. I'm going to have a file drawer here and a file drawer here. And this is the area for the uh, CPU and any other storage you want. Here's going to be a slide out uh, computer uh, keyboard, I don't know what you call it, ledge. Okay, I'll tell you what, uh, I'll go ahead and sand these legs. And well, I, got the <clears throat> I got the legs on it and I'm going to flip it over to put the file drawers in. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to put some stain on it uh, because it's just 
be a lot easier to stain it when it's up here. I'm going to use this color called Golden Oak. Since this thing is got so much oak in it. This is what the framework looks like. Just put together with uh, screws. This is probably the last time we'll see the underside. The underside turned out pretty nice. I'll go ahead and finish the uh, staining process. And here you can see, remember we were talking about these cleats. Um, the file drawers will be hanging out in the open. Um, they're attached to these uh, drawer slides right here. And the drawer slides are connected to the uh, to these cleats. Then here in the center, instead of having a drawer, we're just going to have a piece of wood that slides out um, to put the uh, put your keyboard on if you want. And then down here on the left is the CPU stand. Uh, the beauty of this is it's not back in some inside of a cabinet where you can't reach all the parts. Uh, everything's accessible. Okay, let's uh, build a couple of uh, boxes that'll go um, between these drawer guides here. Most of the boxes we make, we put a dado around the inside and then we feed in a piece of uh, 3 16 inch plywood into that slot and that makes up our bottom. We're going to do this in a lot different. This is my second favorite way to make boxes. Instead of using 3 16 inch plywood, I'm going to use half inch plywood and nail it directly to the bottom. And I'm putting the uh, drawer guides in. Get these boxes installed. I'm going to start thinking about uh, the drawer fronts. Here we're looking at the boxes from the uh, back side. Now since these boxes are exposed, uh, they're going to have to be um, stained uh, just like the rest of the piece. You can see in our picture here that these doors are sheets of uh, plywood with uh, 
oak trim around them. These drawer fronts. Uh, let's go. Uh, that's what we're we're working on now. Let's go take a look at it. I would have preferred uh, oak plywood. This is uh, this is birch plywood here. It's good plywood, and and I put one inch trim around it. This is a total of 18 inches across here. It's about a foot this way. What I'm doing now is just sanding it down and I'll run it through the router. the drawer fronts on. What I'm doing here is uh, breaking off the uh, drawer pull screws that hold the drawer pull on. What you do is you like that. I'll go ahead and put some uh, stain on the uh, file drawer fronts. It can be drying while we do the next uh, process. What we got to do next is build the pull out ledge for the uh, keyboard. Back here on the picture, what we're working on now is this slide out here. In this example, this was a pencil drawer came out, but on our piece we're working on today, this is just going to be a flat tray to put the uh, computer keyboard on. Here's what I envision. Uh, this will be the front right here. And then these oak sides here will hook into the uh, drawer slides and the actual platform will be set in dados on the sides here. So what we need to do now, we're going to have to put uh, pocket holes in this side piece some pocket holes in the back of the platform and I need to round everything over on the uh, uh, router. I'm putting the uh, sides on it. I'm uh, gluing and nailing the sides on. Kind of a different thing here is I'm actually going to use, I don't know if the camera's up there where you can see, but it doesn't matter. I'm uh, going to use staples because I want this thing, you won't be able to see them. Putting the sides on. I'm using glue and staples.
Okay, my theory is um, I'm going to attach this thing with uh, pocket screws. I'm not putting any glue on it though. I'll go ahead and st install it and we'll see if it works. We can always take it out to stain it if we need to. I'll just test drive it here. It ought to work. Well, let's try it again. Well, I got a problem right here. Looks like I got about a half an inch gap here and an eighth inch gap down here. I need to move this thing up a little. I'll go ahead and make that change. Well, we're about ready to wrap this thing up. I'm working on the top now. I got that slide out tray uh, fixed. And I'll tell you what, I'll work on the, uh, work on the top and we'll wrap this, uh, wrap this thing up. This is like a project uh, update. I'm using my stool. Well, that does it for uh, Memphis Monday 225. Um, little, nice little computer desk. It's um, made out of oak. Got a CPU storage area here. Slide out um, platform. Uh, put your keyboard on. Two standard size uh, file drawers. And a good feature about this design, this is my own design by the way, is all the wires and hookups and fittings and all the stuff that's associated with a CPU uh, type uh, uh, computer, it's all exposed. You can get to it. Uh, you don't have to, you know, reach back in a cabinet or anything. So anyway, I'm uh, fairly satisfied. And I guess that does it for Memphis Monday 225. Well, that does it for uh, Memphis Monday 225. Uh, today we built this little uh, computer desk. It's the same computer desk we built, essentially, uh, same design as we built in Memphis Monday 79. Did a few things different, and the video is going to cover things we didn't uh, uh, cover in, in uh, Memphis Monday 79, for example. Uh, we go over the actual building the frame in this one. Anyway, I'm uh, fairly satisfied over the next uh, uh, days and weeks. I'll put uh, polyurethane on it and 
uh, a couple of adjustments I need to make. But overall, I'm pretty satisfied. Uh, like and favorite and share and tweet and Facebook and comment and uh, uh, ring the bell for notifications and all that stuff you do on the internet. But most important, make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for playing along.